The Avonside Engine Company was a locomotive manufacturer in Avon Street, St. Phillips, Bristol, England between 1864 and 1934. However the business originated with an earlier enterprise Henry Stothert and Company. Topic origins The firm was originally started by Henry Stothert in 1837 as Henry Stothert and Company. Henry was the son of George Stothert, senior, founder of the nearby Bath engineering firm of Stothert and Pitt. Henry's brother, also named George, was manager of the same firm. The company was given an order for two broad gauge 7 feet 2134 mm 2 2 2 Firefly class express passenger engines arrow and dart with 7 feet 2.1 meters driving wheels delivered for the opening of the Great Western Railway GWR from Bristol to Bath on the 31st of August 1840. This was soon followed by an order for eight smaller 2 2 2 Sun class engines with 6 feet 1.8 meters driving wheels. Topic. Stothert, Slaughter and Company Edward Slaughter joined the company in 1841, when it became known as Stothert, Slaughter and Company. By 1844 their works were named, Avonside Ironworks. In 1846 built Avalanche the first of five six-coupled saddle tank banking engines for the GWR. Another large order came for 10 broad gauge passenger 4 to 2 minus 2s with 7 feet 6 in drivers and 8 goods engines from the Bristol and Exeter Railway for the independent operation of that line from the 1st of May 1849. In 1851 the company acquired a shipbuilding yard of which Henry Stothert took charge as a separate undertaking. Topic: <laughs> Slaughter, Gruning and Company. In 1856 Henry Gruning became a partner of Edward Slaughter at the Locomotive Works, which then became Slaughter, Gruning & Company. Topic Avonside Engine Company Limited In 1864, with Edward Slaughter still in control, the company took advantage of the company's acts and became the Avonside Engine Company Limited. As if to mark the occasion, the works received a large order the first from the GWR for some years following the development of Swindon Works for 22 Hawthorne class engines with six feet drivers. The Avonside Engine Company and its predecessors were unusual in that most of the production before 1880 consisted of main line locomotives largely for British railway companies but also for export. However, by 1881 main line locomotives were getting much bigger and exceeding the capacity of the manufacturing equipment. They made a positive decision to concentrate on the smaller industrial railway locomotive types for within the capacity of the existing plant. This change was to a degree forced on the company as a result of financial difficulties following Edward Slaughter's death. Edwin Walker of the Bristol engineering firm Fox, Walker & Co. joined Avonside and endeavoured to turn the company round, but without success. In 1899 the company built for the short-lived North Mount Lyle Railway 34-6-0s designed by David Jones Railway. Topic reorganization Walker was forced to liquidate the old company and form a new company with the same name to carry on the same business at the same address. At about this time the old firm of Fox, Walker & Co. was taken over by Thomas Peckett and became Peckett & Sons. <laughs> Move to fish ponds In 1905 the Avonside firm left its historic home at St. Phillips for a new plant at fish ponds but still with a small engine policy. Topic. Closure The company entered voluntary liquidation in 1934 and the goodwill and designs of the company were bought in 1935 by the Hunslet Engine Company. Topic. Locomotive types During the 1860s and 1870s the Avonside Company built broad gauge and standard gauge engines for many British companies, large and small but they also built up a considerable export business. Unfortunately detailed company records from this period have not survived.
Topic fairly this lack of records is particularly unfortunate in that the company was the largest British builder of the fairly articulated locomotive. Amongst the first to be built at Bristol was James Spooner built in 1872 for the Festiniog Railway. Although built to the same basic design as the remarkably successful Little Wonder built by George England & Co., in 1869, it incorporated many detailed improvements and became the prototype for subsequent Festiniog railway engines built in that company's works at Boston Lodge. In 1872 on the recommendation of Sir Charles Fox & Sons, Avonside built two large 42-ton 0 -6 -6 ferries for shipment to Canada, one each to the Toronto, Gray and Bruce Railway and the Toronto and Nipissing Railway. The Avonside Works manager at the time these locomotives were built was Alfred Sacker, the brother of Charles Sacker locomotive engineer of the Manchester Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway. Alfred Sacker trained under Archibald Sturrock at the Doncaster plant of the Great Northern Railway and in 1872 moved from Avonside to the Yorkshire Engine Company, Sheffield where he built more fairly types. Avonside locomotives were exported also to Uruguay, where two 1874 fairly type locomotives plate numbers, 1032 33, 1034 35 worked in the Ferrocarril y Tranvia del Norte, at Montevideo. In 1874, New Zealand Railways ordered two types of double fairly locomotives from Avonside. Both the B-class and E-class double fairlies were fitted with Walshart's valve gear. This was certainly the first use of this technology to be used in New Zealand, and is possibly the first time a British manufacturer has supplied it. The B-class lasted in service until the late 1880s. The E-class were officially written off in 1899, however, most were still in use during the First World War. An 0-4-4T single fairly was built for the Swindon, Marlborough and Andover Railway in 1878. To use a valve gear that fitted entirely outside the wheels, leaving the space between the frames clear for the boiler, this was the first British-based locomotive to use Walshart's valve gear. In 1878–1879 on the recommendation of Robert Francis Fairley Avonside built the R-class of 180-6-4 single fairlies for the New Zealand Government Railways. One, a single fairly R-class number 28 of 1878 survives at Reefton. Avonside Fairley Works List Avonside issued a double works plate for each double fairly, however it is believed that this policy was not always adhered to. Topic. Fell Earlier in 1875 the company had built four powerful tank engines designed by a Swedish engineer H.W. Widmark to operate on the Fell Mountain Railway system on the Rimutaka incline in the North Island of New Zealand. These and two later engines of very similar design built by Nielsen and Company handled the entire traffic for 80 years until the opening of the five-mile-long base tunnel in 1955. Widmark was an inventive engineer and patented a design of steam-operated cylinder cocks which were of great use to Avonside on articulated locomotives since they dispensed with mechanical linkages. Topic. 4-6-0 types Avonside was a very early British builder of the 4-6-0 type of tender locomotive. Ten narrow-gauge freight hauling 4-6-0 locomotives, of weight varying from 20 to 25 tonnes, were supplied to the Toronto, Gray and Bruce Railway and the Toronto and Nipissing Railway. These very successful and reliable wood-burning locomotives predated the first significant British domestic railway 4-6-0, the Jones Goods, by over 20 years. Topic: <laughs> Saddle tanks. Between 1880 and 1930, Avonside are best remembered for the construction of 0-4-0 and 0-6-0 saddle tanks for industrial and dock shunting purposes. Topic. Internal combustion Avonside produced their first «oil motor» locomotive in 1913. Diesel and petrol-powered locomotives were included in their range right up to the end in 1935. Topic. Preservation 
Globally there are 63 Avonside locomotives preserved. United Kingdom The Industrial Railway Society record 34 Avonside locomotives extant in the United Kingdom as at 1 November 2008, Avonside Engine Company locomotives preserved in the UK include, Cadbury No. 1, and 0 4 OT of 1925. Coke fired for cleanliness, it worked on the Bourneville Works Railway its entire life. Donated by Cadbury plc to the Birmingham Railway Museum in Tisley in 1976, it is presently stored awaiting restoration on the Gloucestershire Warwickshire Railway at Toddington. IWD 34 Portbury 0 6 0 Street Works No. 1964 at Bristol Harbour Railway Stamford 0 6 0 Street Works No. 1972 at the Rutland Railway Museum Londonderry Port and Harbour Commissioners No. 3 R. H. Smith 0 6 0 Street Works No. 2021 at the Railway Preservation Society of Ireland Whitehead GWR No. 1340 Trojan 0 4 0 Street Works No. 1386 at the Didcot Railway Centre Woolmer 060 Street, ex Longmore Military Railway, preserved at Milestones Museum, Basingstoke Barrington and 040 St. Locomotive at Cone Valley Railway No. 1798060 Street, Edwin Hulse, preserved and undergoing overhaul at the Avon Valley Railway. <laughs> New Zealand Avonside Engine Company locomotives preserved in New Zealand include R28 1217 of 1878 single fairly reefton H199 1075 of 1875 fell type fell locomotive museum featherston L207 507 1205 of 1877 museum of transport and technology auckland L208 508 1206 of 1877 Shantytown, Greymouth L219 509 1207 of 1877 Silverstream Railway, Wellington <laughs> Brazil Avonside Engine Company locomotives preserved in Brazil include Avonside hash 1047 from 1873 meter gauge 3 feet 3 and 3 eighths 4 4 OT Usina Amalia number no. 3 operated originally at EFY then at USY SRY and EFS from where it was sold to Usina Amalia in Santa Rosa de Viterbo SP today she's operational at LP Assessoria Industrial in Votorantum SP Avonside hash 1244 from 1879, meter gauge 3 feet 3 and 3 eighths, 4 4 OTEFS No. 23. Operated originally at EFY, then at USY, SRY and EFS, from where it was sold to Usina Santalina in Quarta, SP. Today she's operational at Paraguacu Paulista, SP, Railway Museum. Belgium. Avonside Engine Co. Ltd. Hash 1908. Fred. From 1925. Operated originally at Buxton Lime Works with Hash RS16. Today she's operational at Stoomcentrum Maldigem. Topic. See also. Avonside Locomotive Works.